Hello and welcome to another Gamecast review. I'm Mark and I'll be reviewing Monster Hunter World Iceborne, now available for the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. It's no secret that while I enjoyed Monster Hunter World last year, it made a few changes I was apprehensive about, as well as lacked in both difficulty and monster variety. Iceborne is what Monster Hunter World was lacking. It's the introduction of G-Rank, or in this game, Master Rank, the expansion of its monster roster including newcomers, subspecies, and fan favourites, and the newly expanded weapon move lists and clutch claw have opened the game up to really feel like the Monster Hunter game I wanted World to be the first time around. Iceborne picks up pretty much just as soon as the main game ends, with your growing community continuing their research in the new world, when suddenly the monster population has started to act strangely, the Legiana are migrating en masse, and new subspecies are creeping up. While following the Legiana, you stumble across a new region dubbed the Hinterlands, and the explorable locale Hoarfrost Reach. There's plenty to discover here, as a whole host of new monster mysteries are just waiting to be uncovered. There's also a bit of a subplot involving your handler fulfilling her grandfather's research, but it's all minor in the whole Monster Hunter experience. I've always been content with just the gameplay, and while Iceborne tries to make its story a little more engaging than the main game, it's still not that great overall. At best, it gives context as to why so many of your new hunts take place in the ice region. As always, gameplay is king in Monster Hunter, and its core concepts are mostly unchanged in world. Instead, it's what's been added that truly makes a difference. The biggest change is the introduction of Master Rank, which is the new difficulty level exclusive to Iceborne. All of the new missions and story take place within this rank. Basically, all enemy AI has been tweaked and all monsters hit harder and have more HP than before. It takes a bit of getting used to, but for series veterans, it's pretty much G rank from previous titles. It's a mode where the 50 minute time limit makes a lot of sense, as the fights take considerably longer to finish. Hoarfrost Reach is a great place to test the new Master Rank too, as the new environment comes with a host of new hazards and effects, such as ice buildup, the need for hot drinks and hot springs, and collapsible arenas thanks to all the mayhem taking place on the ice. It's a welcome addition even if a majority of the expansion takes place within this new area. Thankfully you can fight Master Rank versions and even tempered Master Rank versions of all the monsters from the main game in older locations for a bit of extra challenge, and for a chance to upgrade your weapons and armour beyond their previous limitations. The new monster additions have helped to fill in what I felt was missing in the original title. Returning monsters like the Tigrix and Glavinus provide great variety while subspecies and variations like the Viper Tobikitachi and the Nightshade Paolumu give new twists on old patterns. Newcomer monsters are refreshing too, with Felkana being an obvious standout thanks to its amazing design and interesting use of ice breath and tiered enraged forms. The endgame and postgame monsters are also pretty major, even if they take a lot of work to get to. Monsters are generally more ferocious than ever before, and thankfully you have a few more tricks up your sleeve this time around too. The biggest change is the introduction of the Clutch Claw, which is a new slinger ability. Basically at any time you can grapple onto monsters and attack different parts of their bodies. A successful attack will weaken that part and allow you to deal more damage as well as soften them up. This can also yield slinger ammo. Monsters won't just let you grab freely though, so you need to pick your moment. Exhausting an enemy, for example, gives you a great opening to steer the enemy towards a wall and unload all your slinger ammo to force it to dash blindly and give you a chance to deal real damage. I really like the Clutch Claw and its integration of the slinger. I originally didn't care much for the slinger in world, but in Iceborne it feels so much more natural. You can even use it with your weapons drawn or mid-combo, with each weapon type having a unique move associated with it, such as a dodge roll and a burst fire with the dual blades. Iceborne's new hub area, Celiana, its new locale, Hoarfrost Reach, and its post-game content all carry the same beautiful quality the core world experience had. It may get a little boring seeing so much snow all the time, but that's how it goes with an expansion that has ice in the title. I like the snow effects in the game and how you can carve out a little path in all the white, as well as how it clings to your armour when you've spent a lot of time rolling around in battle. A majority of the new armours look incredible and it helps keep the hunting and grinding cycle synonymous with these games alive. Weapons on the other hand are a little boring, with only a few of the returning monsters bringing over their old weapon designs. Thankfully, Velkana's weapons are unique in appearance and also a very special post-game monster has all of their classic weapons and armour. Performance-wise, it runs as well as the base game, however it still sounds like a jet engine preparing to take off on an original PS4. I also didn't encounter any bugs or glitches which is great in a game so crammed full of content, and each stage filled with a living ecosystem. 
The soundtrack is still fantastic with many returning monster themes and a good chunk of new ones too. It's always fun hearing one theme triumph over the other when a turf war starts up. Overall, Iceborne is exactly what I wanted World to be. It feels like it has all the content the base game was missing, and all the new additions have been refined and adjusted so that they feel like a natural extension of the formula rather than a gimmick. In my eyes, it really seems like a proper Monster Hunter with all the quality of life improvements the franchise desperately needed. If you already have World and wanted more Monster Hunter, then this is a must buy. If you didn't play World and were interested in the franchise, then this is a great total package. It's filled to the brim with content and you can easily pour over 100 hours into the experience. I hope you enjoyed that video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and please let us know what you thought of Monster Hunter World Iceborne in the comments below. Until next time, bye!